Hello everyone, welcome back to Naomi's Bookshelf. I'm going to do a recent reads kind of idea or a mini wrap up for the first week and a half. Uh, this is something where I have read a lot of books so far this month, not a lot of page count, but I have started reading a lot of books and I also want to share them before I get them muddled with other stuff. So we're going to just jump straight into the books I read so far in August. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is His Two Little Blessings by Mia Ross. This is a Christian romance. It's a love inspired, so it's I think a Harlequin uh, little company that it puts out a lot of Christian romance and I really enjoy them. They're easy to read, kind of fluffy and just wholesome hearted fun. I really do enjoy this. I did enjoy this one. I gave it three stars. I think sometimes it's a little rushed and that's my biggest complaint with things like this but I did really enjoy the characters it is about a single father and he just moves to town and this school teacher this art school teacher who is about to lose her job but then he as a banker is able to come in and like help her figure out the budgeting and how things can possibly work to save her job and then they slowly fall in love it's obviously a romance they obviously get together it was three stars and it was an enjoyable read very quick and easy and fun to get through the next book that I read was for the middle grade magic and that would be Winona's, I think that's right, uh, Pony Cart by Maude Hart Lovelace. So this is the second one in here. It is a very short one. I am currently in the middle of Carney's house party, but I am not making too much progress at this exact minute as there are lots of books I want to read. But anyways, Winona's Pony Cart. I hope I'm saying her name right. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. So this one follows Winona as she's eight years old and she is desperate for her pony cart on her birthday and I think she's actually about to turn eight and it's about her and all of her friends and this some spontaneously big part birthday party. It was fun, it was cute. I don't know if it'd be middle grade specifically as it did feel a little bit younger as she is younger, but I enjoyed it and I was glad to read another book in the Betsy Tacey world. I highly recommend the series, uh, the Betsy Tacey series, but I've also highly recommend Carney's, not Carney's, Winona's pony cart. And actually, as far as I'm into, Carney's House Party as well. So yeah, I love Maude Hart Lovelace. She's a new children's favorite author for me as an adult. And I hope to read more from her. Uh, this month, I want to finish the rest of her books. Okay, the next one was one that I listened to via audio, and it was good. That would be Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. Now, I have never watched her show. Um, what even is her show? I don't remember. Um, 30 Rock, is that? I. I don't know. Um, I have never watched her show. I've never watched her aside from in Mean Girls. That's literally the only thing I've seen her in. But I do enjoy Amy Poehler, uh, Amy Poehler's biography, and so I wanted to read hers as well. Oh, memoir. It was good. But and I enjoyed learning about the impact that she had with uh, the men in her, in the comedy world and how different things were impacted, and how she kind of grew through that. I also really enjoyed hearing some personal stories from her life, but overall it didn't really connect with me as I didn't really connect with her um, as I have never experienced too much from her. So I think if I were to watch more from her and experience more of her work, then I maybe I'd find this even better. I did give it three stars though, and I do recommend reading it. And the audiobook was great. She did narrate it herself and I thought it was fun. The next one that I want to talk about was The Great Gatsby. And this is by F. Scott Fitzgerald, but the graphic novel, which is illustrated by Anya Mort Morton, and the text was adapted by Fred Fordham. Now, this one is a kind of um, simple art style, I guess. I'm not a graphic novelist reader, so I really don't know. Um, this was something where I liked it, and I thought it was easy to read. There was a little bit confusion for the men. Uh, they looked kind of similar in this, but I did enjoy it and I give it four stars. If you don't know, The Great Gatsby is about this man named Nick who moves to New York and he meets his second cousin once again and he uh, is also meeting his neighbor who was named Gatsby and it's kind of about a past love affair between his cousin and Gatsby and then what happens after that. It's very short as a book and the graphic novel was also like 200 pages and it covered the whole story from front to finish. I do really enjoy The Great Gatsby. I think it's a very hard hitting and very depressing book, but it's also really interesting in how it's told. 
I'll see if I can find um, the review, but I saw someone talk about The Great Gatsby and I really remember how they said that Nick is an awful person if you think about it. He's not a very good uh, judgment of character and he really influences us as the reader. If you read it through the fact that Nick is telling you about people before you see things from people. I mean, like if you even look at Tom, who was his friend and Daisy's husband, uh, he tells you right from the beginning that Tom isn't really nice and then after you see that Tom's not nice and Tom's very, uh, he's not a good husband. So in that regard, it's interesting where Nick tells us so that already colors our perception of Tom, even though it does come to be true. And it also colors the perception of Daisy because it is written from T Nick's perspective. It colors our perspe perception of everyone involved. And I thought that was interesting. I'll try to link it down below if I can find it. I found it interesting and I think you should check it out if I do find a link. So the last book that I have finished was The Escape Room by Megan Golden. Now this one I have been working on um, partially through the month of July. I picked it up and hoped to have it finished and I just didn't have enough time in my life to read it. But I was glad I finished this one. So this one is about a group of people, four people in particular, who work for a high finance company, a high important finance company, and they are kind of cutthroat and ruthless with their job and with each other. So this follows them as they enter an elevator thinking that they are going to an escape room which is required for their job to maybe build team morale or something. And then they realize the elevator is the escape room and then there's no way getting out. They have to figure it all out. Meanwhile, it flashes back to a character named Sarah Hall who we is, do not know she's not in the elevator. And it's first person from her perspective of what's going on in her life trying to get a job with this company and trying to work with this team. I found it to be really interesting. I liked the dynamic and literally the whole way through the book, I was gonna give it a four star. I thought it was good, it wasn't perfect, but I was enjoying most of it. And then the ending just let me down. And so I'm giving it a three, but I am interested to read more from Megan Golden. She has a new one coming out soon. And this is not her debut, so I might read her debut as well. But honestly, it was a good book and I recommend it. I also love escape rooms and I love that kind of twisted mentality of, you gotta get out somehow, which is also why I love closed circuit mysteries. And so this one's kind of like that, but it's not a closed circuit mystery. It's more of a thriller and trying to figure out how to get out um, and what's gonna happen to these people. So I don't think there was too much of a mystery element, at least for me, but I did enjoy it a lot. So I feel like I should mention a couple more books that I am in the middle of um, for middle grade magic, which I have been like reading multiple of them at the same time. And so the first one is The Jumbies. I have been reading this one, it's by Tracy Baptiste, and it is a Fijian story based on lore, I believe, um, Fijian lore. It's very scoop spooky so far, but I'm liking it. And I think I'm like 40 pages in, so not really that much, but I am excited to continue on in this one and hopefully I will have this finished tonight or tomorrow would be lovely. I am hoping to get it done quick. It is a quick read. The other one I have an audiobook for and it's a little interesting. I hope to finish listening to the audiobook or picking this one up and that's The Parker Inheritance by Varian Johnson. So this one uh, is about some kids following a, a letter to which is supposed to lead to buried treasure of some sort. I'm very, not very far into the audiobook. It is good, I am enjoying it. I have found that I cannot listen to a Southern accent while listening to an audiobook. It's very hard for me to focus and to retain the knowledge or the information. I discovered that when I was reading Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. So this one also has a narrator who has a Southern accent and I'm hoping I can retain it that way. But I also have the physical book, which I might bring camping with me this weekend and hopefully knock it out of the park. There is also one more book that I am in the middle of for middle grade uh, magic, which is booked by Kwam Alexander and I have an audiobook of it. It is written in verse and I have realized I do not read any poetry. Uh, ever in my life anymore. So in regards to that, I was thinking of physically reading it, but I also really want to listen to it and hopefully that will help me get through it better or more understanding and it'll be a better experience. So I am listening to an audiobook of it and I already enjoy the first 10 minutes. I can't wait to finish it. It's a really short audiobook, like two and a half hours. And it's a big book. So obviously written in verse, it's a lot shorter, but that's also something I am 
currently reading. The last thing that I want to talk about here is something I'm not sure if it's book related, but it is something that is story related. And that would be an Audible exclusive, which is Ex Heist with Michael Caine. And now this one, I listened to all six episodes and really enjoyed. Heist is a buzzword for me. I love books about heists. So in this little podcast series, it's about six different events, well, five different events and one a wrap up of the whole series where it talks about each one has a different kind of heist that it discusses. Um, like there's an Australian one, there's a Switzerland one, there's a States one. They're all over the place and there are people who are the victims talking. There are um, the actual robbers themselves talking. There is so many different things. There's the FBI agents or the police. It's great really enjoyed it and i'm giving it five stars if you have audible totally check out heist with michael kane so good highly recommend so those are the five books that i finished so far this month and the books i'm in the middle of and a podcast that i really enjoyed i highly recommend and i've enjoyed all of these books definitely there none of them are two stars they're all three stars or above and i enjoyed every one of those experiences reading those books thank you for watching this mini wrap up this first parter I guess of the month we'll see how many I get through how many books I want to do a recent reads of and I will hopefully keep up this good reading streak so far please like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you are new here also leave a comment down below about what you're reading so far and if you read any of these books I want to talk about them I will see you next time with another video bye for now